I was Professor Atanasako said I will present uh, today a paper on the informational content of balance sheets about the predictability of stock market returns. The paper is jointly written with uh, Dimitris Tomakos uh, from the University of Peloponnese and Tao Wan from City University of New, of New York. Now, in this line of literature, recently the level of net operating assets has gained attention as a potential predictor of for <coughs> equity valuation and earnings quality. But what is net operating assets? As documented by Penman, net operating assets are the, cumu are the accumulation of, over time of the difference between accounting and cash flow profitability. It is a measure of balance load or equivalently a measure, a cumulative measure of total accruals. And, 2000, and in 2004, Schleifer shows that net operating assets is a strong negative predictor for at least three years after balance information is released. Schleifer shows that a high level of net operating assets <coughs> indicates a rising trend in current profitability that will not be sustained in the future, causing investors with limited attention that do not understand this low sustainability who overvalue firms with high levels of net operating assets and undervalue those with low levels of net operating assets. Consequently, we have a new market anomaly where firms with high NOAA experience negative future abnormal stock returns, while firms with low NOAA experience positive future abnormal stock returns. Further, Schleifer also shows that this measure is a more comprehensive measure of investor over optimism about the sustainability of current earnings performance that captures information beyond <coughs> and above total accruals and argues that net operating assets is superior to accruals in that it captures all cumulative differences between accounting and cash flow profitability while accruals captures only the most recent change. Now, nevertheless, the evidence on the predictive ability of this variable for future stock returns raises several broader questions. First, one cannot know whether and how different forms of net operating assets are related to future returns. An important distinction could be, on <coughs> could be based on the underlying business activity that no capture. And another important distinction could be on the underlying benefits and obligations that NOAA represent. Second, the interpretation of the anomaly is still a controversial issue. From a rational pricing perspective, one can think that higher returns of low NOAA firms relative to high NOAA firms could be compensation of high, simply compensation of high risk. And the type of risk at the center of that argument is distress risk. Note that in another paper, Callan and Siegel have derived a valuation model similar to that similar to the evaluation model of Campbell and Schiller, using this variable. Hughes Life from 2006 argued that possibly mis-risk factors could eliminate NOAA mispricing, while recently Kant shows that firms with low working capital accruals exhibit distress risk characteristics. Under an irrational interpretation, the most common line of thought focus, follows the opportunistic earnings management hypothesis and the agency related hypothesis. In both cases, we have high net operating assets. And another competing behavioral explanation would be that a high level of net operating assets would indicate adverse information about firm business conditions. In all these three cases, a high level of NOAA indicates low sustainability of current profitability. And as such, investors limit attention on this low sustainability could cause the abnormal returns of this, of this anomaly. As a final behavioral interpretation, one would think the classic extrapolation hypothesis of Lacan show about the performance of value and growth firms. Recall, net operating assets are equal to the cumulative difference between accounting and cash flow profitability. Therefore, they tend to rise with sales. That means a firm with high level of NOAA is more likely to have high past sales growth, while a firm with low levels 
of NOAA is more likely to have low past sales growth. Therefore, investors' errors and expectations about future growth will be also an explanation of this market anomaly. Now, in this paper, we try to focus on the anomaly to get a deeper understanding of its underlying sources. First, we investigate the relation of net operating assets and all NOAA components with future stock returns before and after controlling for total approvals. In our initial decomposition, we decompose net operating assets based on the underlying, underlying business activity that they capture. Net operating assets will be equal, will be decomposed to net working capital assets that captures current operating activities and into net non-current operating assets that captures investment. And in our extended decomposition, net working capital assets and net non-current operating assets will be decomposed on their underlying benefits and obligations. We will have a decomposition into working capital assets, working capital liabilities, non-current operating assets, and non-current operating liabilities. Second, to investigate whether the anomaly reflects simple risk premium, we investigate abnormal returns on hedge trading strategies on NOAA and all NOAA components. And as a final step, we also investigate, we also apply the statistical arbitrage test of Hogan to these hedge trading strategies to avoid the joint hypothesis dilemma of traditional market efficiency tests. And finally, in order to distinguish between existing behavioral we investigate abnormal returns of hedge trading strategies on the expected and unexpected parts of NOAA and NOAA components. And finally, we investigate the abnormal returns on the NOAA strategy after controlling for overinvestment factor. Now, the sample used here in the paper covers all non-financial firm year observations with available data on PRISM and CompuStat for the period between 1962 and 2003. Now, for the definition of the account definitions of net operating assets, you can find them on the, on the paper. We do not have time to rely on them. And the analysis starts with simple Fama MacBeth regressions of future of one year ahead raw stock returns on NOAA and NOAA components, one year ahead raw stock returns are constructed using 12 month buy and hold with the compounded 12 month buy and hold returns inclusive of dividends and other distributions and starting with regression results from panel A one would see a strong negative relation between net operating assets and future stock returns for panel B one can see that this relation applies to both NOAA components based on the decomposition, uh, based <coughs> to applies to both net non-current operating assets and net working capital assets. And from panel C, one can see that the relation is mainly driven from the asset side of NOAA. Note also that in all regressions, Total accruals in the presence of no and no components lose their, their predictive power for future stock returns. In other words, accruals are subsumed, the predictive power of accruals for future stock returns is subsumed by that of no. However, these results, as already mentioned, could be simply compensation for higher risk. To assess this possibility, we investigate abnormal returns on hedge trading strategies based on NOAA components. To implement this strategy, each year we sort firms into 10 equal size volumes based on the market of NOAA components. Every year, portfolios are rebalanced. And for each portfolio, we invest, we estimate the one year ahead size adjusted return. Size adjusted return of a firm is defined as is 
is measured by deducting from the raw stock return evaluated average of all other firms in the same size design. And finally, we also investigate the return to a head strategy consisting of a short position on the lowest known portfolio and a long position on the highest known portfolio. Now, results from hedge trading strategies are reported on table 4. From the first column, we see that the known strategy generates a size adjusted return of about 15.6%. The strategy is profitable, is found profitable in 34 out of 40 years of our sample period, indicating that the relation is stable over time. Turning to the second and the third column, we see positive size adjusted returns for both net working capital assets and net non carbon operating assets. Turning now to panel B, we see positive size adjusted return only for the asset NOAA components and insignificant returns for the liability NOAA components. Similar results are found using an alternative NOAA definition based on the selection of several operating assets and several operating liabilities. They are similar with table 4, but this definition of NOAA allows us to find in panel C that only account receivables and inventory generate significant returns, and from panel B, D, that only net property, plant equipment, and intangibles generate significant positive size adjusted returns. As I said, in order to distinguish more properly between rational and irrational interpretations, we also investigate, we also consider the hedge risk adjusted alpha for each strategy from the capital asset pricing model, from the Pharma French three factor model, and from the CAHA four factor model. In order to avoid the joint hypothesis dilemma, we also apply the statistical arbitrage test of home. In particular, we consider two implications of statistical arbitrage for each strategy. First, whether the mean incremental profit of a strategy is positive, and second, whether its time average standard deviation declines over time. Economically speaking, we investigate whether a strategy produces a riskless incremental profit with an associated sharp ratio increasing monotonically over time. Starting with panel A from the first row, we see for net operating assets, net working capital assets, net non current operating and assets, and asset no component, positive and significant risk adjusted alphas from the CEPM model. And note that the spread here in debt from the CEPM model is somewhat higher than the respective size adjusted returns. Similar findings we're going to find from the Pharma French and the Cahart model that tells that these three models are completely, they cannot explain the anomaly. Completely, they cannot explain the anomaly. Turning now to panel B, we see that for the NOAA strategy, for the strategy on net non, net non current operating assets and non current operating assets, we see statistical. We see that the strategy is consists of statistical arbitrage opportunities at the 1% level. And for networking capital assets and working capital assets, we see that they constitute statistical arbitrage opportunities at the 5% level, level. Hence, we see that we see a higher risk, possibly a higher risk exposure for the working capital components. And for the reliability of components, we see that they do not, they do not survive the test. Now, summarizing up to here, our results imply that, that the no anomaly comes from the asset side. That's the first major finding. And second, up to now, results are consistent with Hirschlarif behavioral 
explanation which deciphers investors' misperceptions of firms with bloated margins. But the rationale for these misperceptions is ambitious. As already mentioned, firms with bloated balance sheets may have higher past sales growth. Therefore, Laconishon explanation, Laconishon extrapolation hypothesis would be an explanation for the unknown. But a high level of net operating assets could also come from earnings margin or could also indicate high organic growth. And to distinguish between these hypotheses, we decompose net operating assets into their expected and unexpected. The decomposition will be made using the model of chart that relies on the idea that the expected part of net operating assets is closely related with past sales growth given by this expression. Then, the unexpected part is calculated as the difference between the actual part and the expected part. Therefore, if investors' error expectations are the underlying calculus, we should find positive abnormal returns only in the expected part. While if earnings management and or a relative slowdown in fuel business conditions is the underlying cause, we should find positive returns only on the unexpected part. Results are reported on table 7. From panel A, we see that the expected part of NOAA and all NOAA components produces insignificant returns. While from panel B, we see that the returns, we see positive and significant size adjusted returns for the NOAA strategy, for the strategies based on our initial NOAA decomposition, and from asset NOAA components. But the spread here in returns is somewhat lower than the spread reported on tables 4 to table 5. The spread, the size adjusted return for the NOAA strategy is 15.6%, .6 while the unexpected part produces only 8.7% return. That means that these two explanations, earnings management and or related slowdown from business conditions, could only partially explain the unknown. And this leaves out space for the overinvestment hypothesis, for the agency-related overinvestment hypothesis. And what we do here is we examine abnormal returns on the NOAA strategy after controlling for past return on equity. Past return on equity is defined as a weighted average of past profits related to current total book value of equity. And as mentioned by Chan, this measure can be used as an indicator of managerial discretion to use past profits to increase current shareholders' wealth. In other words, think about firms with high NOAA and low past return Managers of these firms have a lie, higher likelihood to use past profit from investments to sell their own interests, while firms with low NOAA and high past return are firms whose managers have a higher likelihood to use past profits from investments to increase current shareholders' wealth. And to implement these two weight dimensional strategies, we first sort firms based on the magnitude of NOAA and then within into 10, into 10 equal size portfolios. And within each NOAA portfolio, we make a second sort on past the term on equity. That means we have 100 portfolios, but our focus is on extreme portfolios. Therefore, we combine the middle portfolios together. And from the first row, one can see that only firms with low NOAA and high past return on equity, that means firms with managers 
that have a higher likelihood to make decisions that serve shareholder interest, only those firms generate significant, positive significant size adjusted returns. And from the third row, we see that only high NOAA firms with low past return on equity <coughs> have negative size adjusted returns. Though only firms with whose managers have a higher likelihood to make decisions that serve their own needs experience negative abnormal returns. And let me arrive at the conclusions. Here we, in this paper we tried to have an explanation of the no anomaly first documented by David Schleifer. And what we found is that the anomaly is mainly comes from the asset side. Our results are consistent with the behavioral interpretations. And this leads us to conclude that investors naively fail to anticipate that high levels of only operating assets imply low sustainability of current profits, leading to significant security price. Second, that earnings management and and or slow down in firm business conditions could only partially explain the anomaly. And third, that agents related overinvestment could also have a potential important role. Our main conclusion is that these three hypotheses should be treated as supplementary in interpreting the non-anomaly.